Hey guys, it's Celestia. It's been so long since I didn't open a video with, hey, sorry I'm late again, that I don't even remember how to open a video the right way anymore. Wow. Uh, okay, well, first of all, thank you guys so much for almost 500 subscribers. I can't believe that I started this year with like 40 and now we're here, only two months in. It's because of you guys that I'm so motivated to keep working on this channel whenever I have the time, and I honestly can't properly express how grateful I am for that support. Anyway, as you guys voted for on Twitter, today we're gonna be talking about art styles, and that really is as specific as I can get because I'm gonna be going over pretty much everything under the art style umbrella here, including how I found mine slash how to find yours, how important it is to have a distinct art style, the benefits of having multiple art styles, and how audiences respond to different styles. As always, I'll try to break that down into sections, but as always, I'll inevitably start rambling and lose any semblance of structure, so bear with me. So let's start with the importance of having a distinct art style, because I feel like it's important for me to open up this entire discussion by saying that in my opinion, it really is not that important. I'm not saying it doesn't have benefits, because it definitely does, and I will get into those too. But if you don't have a super recognizable, clear, polished style, I think that your priority should be improving your overall skill and technique rather than focusing so much on style that you sacrifice quality. Stylizing your work should come after you have a solid grasp on art as a whole, generally speaking, because your ability to stylize your work well is largely dependent on your overall skill, and learning proper anatomy and technique allows you to exaggerate and change aspects of your work to suit a particular style without resulting in any glaring errors. Catch me side-eyeing my entire folder of old art, where my characters' heads are the size of their torso, not because of any art style choice, but because I started learning art from anime and genuinely had no idea what a proportion was. Not that there's anything wrong with starting from anime, because I really don't even vaguely regret the influence it had on where my work has come to now. But having to relearn what a head is actually supposed to look like after having been drawing for years sucked. My point here is that if I had learned the right proportions from the get-go, I could have exaggerated those heads to look intentionally stylized like anime, rather than like unsettling alien humans whose necks probably struggle a great deal to hold up their heads. Style is also something that will come in time, just because art is so inherently influenced by the art that you consume. Even if you're not actively trying to develop a style for the sake of notoriety or recognizability, which apparently is a word even if it sounds like it shouldn't be. I mean, I still see aspects of my art that have carried over from when Inuyasha was my number one inspiration, or when I wanted to be a manga artist, or when I got really into graphic novels, and I never made any conscious decision to try to imitate those. As you grow as an artist, you find the things that you enjoy and that work for you, and your style gradually builds itself around that. There's nothing wrong with seeing a style you like and trying to emulate it. In fact, that's pretty much exclusively how any style develops, and it's a super helpful practice that you should absolutely do as often as possible. But you shouldn't be hard on yourself for having a more mainstream look to your art either. Style is something that should be worked on and studied, but it's also something that develops gradually and slowly, and it's something that constantly changes because your art grows with you. In my opinion, you shouldn't put too much value on having a constant, unchanging, perfectly adhered to art style, and you should just give yourself the freedom to grow and implement your favorite techniques and looks on your own schedule. On the other side of the coin, there there are some distinct benefits to having a style you're very practiced and comfortable with. First, if your style is one that's particularly recognizable, your audience will come to enjoy your art more because of that and less because of what you're drawing. It can be really frustrating to have people follow you only because you make a lot of fan art of a certain thing, but if people follow you for your style, they'll stick around no matter what you're actually drawing, which alleviates a lot of the pressure in that regard. It also gives you an advantage for commissions, because people won't just want this particular thing or character drawn, they'll want it drawn in your style. They'll be willing to pay more and order more, because you have something that only you can offer. Whereas if the subject they're commissioning you to draw is the only reason they're buying it, you're really just one in a huge pool of artists who can all draw that person or thing. Finally, having a style you're innately familiar with and used to can make drawing itself a lot faster. The more you draw a thing, the easier it'll become to draw that thing. And similarly, the more often you draw a certain way, the easier it'll become to draw everything that you've drawn that way. This is one huge argument that I found against the whole let your style grow with you point. Because if your art style is constantly changing, you don't develop the same speed and ease with drawing everything a certain way, so you'll have to spend more time looking at references and making conscious decisions to achieve a certain look with your work. I personally think that you'll grow more as an artist if you do take that time to constantly learn and develop what you're doing, but I also think that if you're doing this professionally, it can be difficult to allocate that kind of time for something like that and it can be a lot more beneficial and feasible to prioritize speed over growth. It really comes down to what works best for you and what your preference is. Next, let's talk about how to find your art style. Like I've said so far, style does come naturally with growth as an artist, but it's also very beneficial to make an active effort to look at art you really like and think, why do I like that so much? 
so that you can potentially implement the techniques or features that you like into your own work. For example, I really, really love Demupan's art. And if you don't know who that is, look them up, they're the best. But just looking at it and thinking, God, I wish my art was that cute, doesn't really help me. Instead, I usually make a list of traits in it that I love and want to try out. Like messier, thicker line art, more limited color palettes, simpler cell shading, etc. I don't implement everything, of course, because my goal isn't to snatch that style, but to learn from it and improve my own. So while I do use those aspects as inspiration, I still maintain the way I draw my characters, the way I draw faces, the anatomy, rather than adopting Nemupan's more chibi-like style as well. Breaking art you love down into specific things that you love about it is a really helpful way to improve your own style. And it also allows you to draw inspiration from multiple and even very different creators all at once. Conversely, I also spoke to another artist once who told me that he had done a full-ass art study where he found an artist he really loved and spent like a month trying to draw exactly like them. And he found that very helpful too. He still broke it down into specific aspects, but rather than just the things he liked, he pretty much dissected their style into bullet points and tried to straight up copy it instead of actively trying to add those techniques to his own style. And after the month was up and he went back to his own style again, he found himself retaining a great deal of the things that he'd learned from the study, even in his own individual work, because he had learned what things worked for him and what things didn't. I haven't tried this myself largely because I just don't have that kind of time, but the reason I bring it up is not only because it's a valuable strategy that you should definitely try for yourself, but to illustrate the fact that different things work for everyone. What worked for him might not work for me, what worked for me might not work for him, and what worked for either of us might not work for you. Art isn't easy to break down into black and white advice, largely because it's just a big mess of trial and error, and ultimately I just encourage you to give anything that interests you a shot and see how it goes. The bottom line that I've found is just to try to really examine the art that you love and break down why you love it. Because no matter what you decide to do with that information, it gives you a clearer understanding of what you're looking for in your own art and what you want to achieve with your own style. I find that when I compile a bunch of saved art that I enjoy from a variety of different artists and look at it all at once, I can find a huge list of design elements and traits that they all share. And regardless of how I decide to let that influence my own work, it's always handy to be able to put a finger on what are effectively my art goals through the work of others. Finally, I'm going to combine my last two points here, which are the benefits of having multiple art styles and how audiences respond to different art styles, because parts of these points very much go hand in hand. To start though, let me just say that you don't need to have just one art style. It's understandable and quite frankly very valuable to focus all of your efforts into improving and perfecting only one, and honestly that might be what works best for you. But I found it very helpful to develop multiple depending on what you're creating, your mood, the look you're going for, your audience, and a multitude of other factors. This isn't something that'll work for everyone, but if it is something you try and find helpful, you'll end up with a vastly more versatile kit of techniques at your disposal. It also helps you develop different skill sets that are specific to those particular styles, and those skills tend to carry over through all of your work. For example, for today's art, I went with a more simplistic style that adheres more to the stylized, streetwear, less rendered aesthetic, which I've been doing a lot more of lately. But the skills I learned from practicing more realism were still implemented in the anatomy and the fabric folds, Similarly, when I'm going with more of a rendered painted style, similar to what I used for my Sailor Moon fan art in my Agoraphobia video, the techniques I learned from doing traditional art studies on things like my apples and oranges replica painting carried over. And the opposite can also be true. I found that doing a lot of exaggerated, color palette inspired work like today's has helped me develop a better understanding of color theory and composition that then carries over into a more realistic style as well. There's always going to be overlap between those styles, and while that can actually come with complications of its own, it is largely beneficial. That's only the first of many reasons to have multiple art styles though, especially if you're someone like me that doesn't have a particularly distinct or recognizable style to begin with. Being able to switch between a relatively diverse range of styles can allow you to appeal to a wider range of audiences. Like I mentioned before, style can be a huge draw when it comes to commissions and the general consumption of your content to begin with, and it can be incredibly beneficial to your business to appeal to multiple audiences via multiple styles. For example, the art that I post to the majority of my social media online is generally done in styles that I personally enjoy the most, and has an audience of largely people in my own age group that enjoy the same kind of media that I do, because that media so visibly and clearly influences it. But I also run a significant side business of traditional paintings and commissions, or technically their Faber-Castell markers used in a way that emulates painting without being as expensive or messy, but whatever. And that appeals to a less niche audience that appreciates the more classic style. 
I don't honestly enjoy this work as much for a lot of reasons, but not only has developing this style been profitable for me, it's allowed me to branch out my business and clients significantly more than if I were pigeonholed into one single style. This method is a double-edged sword though, in that you run the risk of alienating one audience by trying to appeal to too many at once. What I mean is that if what you're posting on your social media is a completely random mix of still lifes, traditional portraits, Naruto fan art, cute chibis, detailed pencil sketches of birds, and abstract paintings, no one will know even vaguely what to expect of you. And the people who want to follow you for one style might unfollow you for posting such a random and inconsistent array. What I've found that works for me is to tailor what you're posting to where you're posting it. My Twitter and Instagram almost never feature any of my traditional work, focusing largely on my anime and comic styles, whereas my Facebook focuses more on the traditional side of things, because those audiences respond better to those particular types of work. It allows me to make all the different kinds of art that I want to, while also maintaining consistency with my audiences. Catering to a wider variety of audiences can also be a double-edged sword for another reason though, and that's how tempting it can be to stop drawing how and what you want, and instead drawing the stuff people want to see the way they want to see it drawn. I focused on a month of doing commissioned traditional paintings, and the engagement on my Facebook as well as the sheer profit was enough for me to be unbelievably tempted to pursue that more significantly, despite the fact that I found it very, very draining and didn't enjoy it in the same way that I enjoyed my more anime, cartoony style. Don't let your audience control what you make, just market what you make in the smartest way possible, so as to do what you're already doing in a manner that allows you to reach a wider range of people. Finally, the last point when it comes to how different audiences react to different styles is to not let people's preferences define how you see your art. For example, when I posted my apples and oranges replica, 90% of my family suddenly started saying, whoa, I knew you could draw anime or whatever, but this, this is amazing, you should do way more of this. Because to them, that traditional look was real art, and exemplified more skill than my digital stylized stuff. And while it was very flattering to have people tell me that what I made was good, it was also absolutely crushing to essentially hear, don't waste your time with that anime garbage when you could be making this, when I enjoy making both and think both are good in different ways. But then I posted that same apples and oranges painting to an Animal Crossing group, because the fact that the original painting I was replicating was in Animal Crossing was actually why I did an art study on it to begin with, don't judge me. Uh, and the majority of the response was that it was good, but that my anime style was preferred. So I guess what I'm saying with this example is that every person has a different perception of art and style, every person has a different definition of what makes art good, and what you make will never make everyone happy. Make what you want to make in whatever style you want to make it in, and market it accordingly. But don't let people's responses to one style make you think that your other style or styles aren't good enough in comparison. Anyway, I could go on for an appallingly long time about art styles, in large part because there are valid points to be made in defense of every approach to them. But this video is already too long, so I'm gonna leave it at what I've said already. I will wrap this up by saying that, honestly, however you decide to develop your style is 100% the right way for you. Because there's just really no one right way for everyone to go about growing as an artist and growing your individual style and look. It's a process that's completely dependent on you, your preferences, your pace, where you started, where you want to end up, and a million other variables. And the points I've made in this video are really just the points that I've learned from my specific experiences. You could probably do the exact opposite of everything I suggested and still end up with a cool style just the same. So take what I said here with a grain of salt. The bottom line is to just let yourself and your art grow at your own pace and in your own way, and appreciate it for exactly what it is. Alright, thank you guys for listening, and I hope you enjoyed another rambly mess. If you want to say in what I discuss in my next video, you can vote in my Twitter poll that's linked in the description, or you can join my Discord and suggest a topic of your own. You should really join my Discord anyway, it's still very small, but the people there are absolutely awesome and you're missing out by not meeting them. We also share art memes, and that's a draw in and of itself. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you in my next one.